Today I'm going to take you on a journey through my first setup on the GT32. I'm going to load in brass on this machine, but the part we're making is out of this 7 8 316 steel. This part is an aerospace fitting in that I used to make on the lathe. And it's got a little bit of everything for the features. I think it's a perfect fit for the GT32. We're going to start by getting in our main collet. I've cleaned out the inside of these, got the spring, pop that in there. I've got a 7 8 hard inch collet. Make sure the inside of this is all clean, no chips. Pop that in like that. I've got this groove on the sleeve here. We got this hole here on the outside. We're just going to line up our sleeve with that. Ooh, we'll grab our main collet. Got our main collet in there. We have to adjust the tension on it, but we'll wait till we actually have our bar loaded for that. So next we'll put in the guide bushing. I have a 7 8 collet from Hardinge. So it looks like it's seen a little bit of history. I don't know who did that. I think it was my predecessor, but we'll get this in there. So we're gonna line it up with that. Yep, get it in there. And as I tighten this down, you should see that collet get sucked into the guide bushing. Next, we're going to set our sub collet. It's very similar to the main collet. I cleaned out our sleeve here and I've got our spring. Get that slid in there. Then we got our 5 8 hard inch collet. Pop it into the cap. like we did on the main collet. Cool, that's not going anywhere. We're going to set the tension for the sub collet. Got our gauge pin and we can adjust the pressure now. I can't even tighten this down because of how tight it is so we'll loosen it up and set it properly. Check here, now it's super loose. I'm just going to give it another quarter turn while it's unclamped there and now we're going to clamp it. So we got this nice and tight. I'm going to unclamp it. Cool. So this is all set. Now we can load our material. I've ran a lot of bar feeders before on the lathe but these ones are really cool. You're able to run full-size 12-foot bars. And that's kind of impressive ain't it? <laughs> on a lathe I'm so used to running bar feeders that are four foot max so these are pretty intense. As soon as you close them, they're just covered with oil. It's crazy. We got our bar loaded in. I'm going to feed it through till I see it pop out of the main collet. So I'm going to adjust the tension now. It's not moving there. We're going to unclamp it. We're just going to give it a quarter turn from where it's at. There, down like that. So all we got left is to set the guide bushing. We're going to feed the material through. And feed this back until I have some room to put my wrenches on. We'll tighten this up. Get this nice and tight. Right. Happy with the tension there. So we got our material in and all our collets are set. Now we can start loading in some tools. These are quick change holders from Golden Bolt. These are really cool. I wish on our other lathes that we had that we had something like this because it's so cool that these just snap right in. You can have your measurements preset and punch them into your offset page and they'll save so much time having to remove it instead of having to fuss with wedges or set screws or whatever. So the first tool we're going to be putting in is our part off tool. I'm using one of Kenna Metal's part offs, a 118 wide. Because of the direction that this tool is facing and the way that we're mounting it in the machine, I actually took the measurement from the side of the tool to the edge of the insert and then I'm going to add 118 thousandths for my insert width 
so I get the distance from the side to this cutting edge. And I'm going to put that number into my offsets so that tool is set. And then all I have to do afterwards is touch off X. I'm going to mount it into our first station here. Just locks right in. And then we'll tighten. The next one going in is an OD turning tool. It's a DCMT insert from Kenna Metal. I'm actually going to swap this out and we're going to put a bigger radius in there. This is going to do most of the main OD work on our part. This is another familiar tool. I've used lots of DNMGs and other kinds of turning tools on lathes, so it works the same way as a regular turning lathe. It's just a little bit smaller. This is just a standard threader, and this is just a 62 thousandths wide groover. You've seen them before in my other videos, so it's really cool that this is the same exact tooling that I've used before. It's just in a different package. Again, I really wish I had these holders because all I have to do is pop this into the slot above our OD turning tool. That's going to run the threads on the front of our part. After that, we got an OD grooving tool from Kenna Metal. We got a top notch KCU 25 grade insert going into here. You can see on the Golden Bolt holders, we got these coolant through lines that can attach to them. And they feed out through this little hole. So you can have your coolant going through, and it'll come out through there. We're going to be running coolant on our steel part when we get there. We're going to, I'm going to prove it out on a brass part and so you can see it on camera but we're eventually going to be running a full part on steel, full coolant. I've got one more OD tool I'm going to be putting into the main gang. It's another DCMT insert. This one is a finisher that I'm thinking about using, so I'm going to put it in there, touch it off, and I'm going to see how it is with the first insert, and if I need this one, I'm going to run it also. I'm going to put a fresh insert in, and it's for stainless steel. Lock it in, folks. I've got one of Kenna Metal's long drills here and a hydraulic collet. It's just like I've used on the SMX. I use the hydro forces all the time. So similar deal. The shape of the holder is a little bit different. We have a locking screw on the back here, but the collet's the same, same concept. I'll pop it into one of these Golden Bolt ID stations here. Stick it out far enough. It doesn't really matter which way you flip this bit here. I'm flipping it up just so in case later on or in a future job I decide that I need to use one of these pockets, I'm not having this screw block the way. All right. Next I'm going to start putting in our live tools. I've got this 12 millimeter end mill inside of an ER20 dual lock collet. These are really nice because it's a solid ER collet with the dual lock thread inside of it. So you can attach the dual locks easily. So we just pop it in like this. And if you look at our live tooling gang right here, these are all spaced out on different lengths here. We have to be mindful about the size of the tool that we're putting into and how far along we want that tool to stick out because depending on where the tool sticks out here, that affects how far our bar needs to come out. And for bigger tools, we have to watch that we don't hit the spindle if we have them too short out. So I'm going to put this end mill into the first station here. Then we're going to tighten it with our wrenches. I'm not a big fan of these style of wrenches. Back when we had a machine shop, I'm so used to having to borrow these from other machinists and having them all stripped out because they over tighten them. So it's a nice surprise coming back to the Swiss department that I'm going to have to use these again. Sometimes in life you just have to uh, accept it and move on. <laughs> Next, I've got another Kenna Metal drill going in. This time it's a flat drill, so flat tip drill. And I'm going to be using this to put some flats around the hex of my part so that I can come in and do some wire holes. I'm going to be doing something very similar to when Donnie started the wire holes with his end mill, but I'm just going to use a flat drill for that. Pop it in the station above it. So I'm going to be putting in two live tooling blocks here. Only one is going to be used in the middle there. And I'm putting in the second one just so it can drive the gear to this tool here and keep my options open in case I needed to add another tool there or I wanted to use it. So I've got a middle cover going on here. Make sure my mounting surface is clean. And then we'll toss this, this one right at the top there. Got a left guard here. Then 
and I'll lock the second one down. And then I'm going to put these chip guards on top. Left one right here. Our live tooling blocks are in place. I'm going to put our 70,000 drill into the bottom block. This 70,000 drill is doing the wire hole in the hex of our part. I've got this converter here that'll change our collet from ER20 to ER16. And I actually want this because I want this tool to stick out a little bit farther than if I just had it in a normal ER16 collet. We'll pop it into the, the bottom one here. And take this overkill wrench. So we've got our ER16 collet. Pop it into that top piece. I'm gonna get it started first. And we'll throw it in there. Don't want to tighten down on it yet. I just want it in there so it's a little snug. And then we'll take our drill. I'm going to shove it in and it's going to stick out a little bit. I think it'll be fine for this. The body of it's very stout. The drill is kind of small, but I need it to stick out a little bit because of clearances on this machine. We'll tighten down our ER collet. Not too tight. Boom. We should have everything in our main gang now. Now we just have to add in some tools into the sub spindle. I've got an OD tool from Graph. We're gonna pop it into this first station right here. Now we got our OD tool in. We're gonna put the blocks in for our ID tools. I'm gonna put it over in these two stations up here. I'm gonna make sure everything's nice and clean. Feel with my hands, make sure there's no chips or anything there. Then we'll drop it down. And set it, set it right on the fixture point. I've got our ID blocks in there now. The last tools we're putting in are our two ID tools for the sub spindle. I've got two horn solid carbide bars here, one of their super mini boring bars and their threader. So I'll pop these in there and this will do all the ID work on our sub spindle. And these are all the tools we're going to be using to make the aerospace fitting end. All we have left to do is to touch off these tools and we can get running on this. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to touch these off because we have a really good Swiss Academy that has all the details on how to set up a machine like this. So make sure you check it out. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel and stay tuned because I programmed this part in SolidCam and we're going to run it out of 316 on this machine. You're not going to want to miss that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Let's make some chips.